Good day, my dear brothers. This is Father Blake Britton. Uh, I apologize I'm not able to be with you at this time during your retreat because of various circumstances that are currently going on, but I'm so excited that I was invited by Deacon Richard and allow this opportunity to share my heart with you and to talk about a very special person, and that's the Venerable Carlos Acudis. He is an incredible young man who really exemplifies the theme of this retreat that you're currently going through, which is the Beatitudes. And as I was speaking with Deacon Richard and Quan the Seminarian, we were talking about how one particular Beatitude really is personified in Venerable Carlos, and that's the Beatitude of Purity of Heart. This, of course, is the one that allows us to see God, right? So if we have pure hearts, pure minds, meaning if we have a pure intention, a true desire to live the way that Christ has asked us to live, then our eyes are opened to his great love for us and to the beauty of the vocation that he's called us to. And Venerable Carlos really exemplifies this. Why? Well, he was a young man who was actually born in 1991, died in 2006 from suffering a serious terminal illness. But within that short lifetime, he was able to really capture his own vocation to become a saint. How did he do this? In a way that many of us would not expect. Gaming. Now, I'm a gamer, and I love to game. I know that many of you are also gamers, and we do not typically associate or typically think about gaming being a way to holiness. But here is someone who is with, in our age group, someone who is one of our peers that not only enjoyed gaming, but was able to help grow in holiness through that activity. And that teaches us, by the way, on a side point, how nothing cannot be sanctified by Christ. Christ can sanctify all things. All we have to do is invite him into them. Jesus does not come to take away your fun. The complete opposite. He comes to enrich it, to make it more beautiful than you could ever imagine. The Lord can, can make even the most mundane, simple things in our lives avenues of great goodness and great beauty. And this is what he did with Venerable Carlos. So this young gamer, thoroughly enjoying his life, ends up experiencing Christ in a very special way, particularly through the Holy Eucharist. And I know for all of you as altar servers, you're always so close to Jesus's body, his blood, soul, and divinity by serving at the altar. Well, Carlos was also touched by that, by the fact that Jesus gives himself to us in such an incredible way through the Holy Eucharist. And so much was he inspired by the sacrifice of the Holy Mass that he actually ended up developing a website in which he cataloged the Eucharistic miracles that were taking place around the world and the Eucharistic miracles that had taken place throughout history. So we know that at various points throughout the church's history that there were times when Jesus actually transformed or did miraculous things through the Holy Eucharist. And of course, the Eucharist itself is already a miracle, <laughs> right? <laughs> the fact that we get to receive the body and blood of Christ. But there were occasions when maybe priests were doubting the Eucharist, or maybe some people were having trouble understanding the Eucharist, and Jesus went an even extra step by performing these kinds of miracles to help people grow in their faith in the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. Venerable Carlos, having a deep love for the Eucharist, but also having this knowledge of gaming and of, of computer coding, decided to make a website for people who were also struggling with their faith in the Eucharist, and also a website that would help evangelize devotion to the Holy Eucharist. And this remains until today, touching the lives of millions of people. And here is a boy who died in his youth, died in his teenage years, but through just surrendering his love of gaming, surrendering his love of, of life, surrendering all these wonderful things and giving them to Jesus and trusting that Jesus can do something wonderful with them, was able to touch the hearts of millions and bring millions of souls to Christ. A couple of lessons to learn from Venerable Carlos. First of all, never say that you're too young. The Holy Spirit doesn't care about age. He cares about the heart. This is all that we need to be a saint. It's a good heart. We see this throughout all of church history. There are amazing children. There are amazing teenagers who are saints. Joan of Arc herself, one of the great saints of France, right? 18-year-old, 19-year-old young woman who ends up leading a great crusade of truth against her enemies and brings truth to her people and inspires the heart of her people. You have, in my own state, I'm from the state of Florida. I'm not too far from Disney World, actually. I'm only about 30 minutes from Disney World. <laughs> I grew up going there all the time. 
uh, not here in my own state of Florida, there are Native American children who are martyred for the sake of the faith. One of them, uh, Blessed John, he actually died cradling the Holy Eucharist and protecting the, the Blessed Sacrament from desecration. I know in your own country of Canada, there are many holy men and women who fought for the sake of the faith. Never say that you're too young. Jesus is ready to make you a saint now, and your name can be numbered among those many saints such as Venerable Carlos. And number two, never take any of your desires, any of your hopes, any of your aspirations for granted or think that they're contradictory to God's will for you. God wants to use you. He doesn't want to use something other than you. God, God wants to, to sanctify you, not someone other than you. You don't have to try to change yourself into something that you're not in order for Jesus to make you a saint. He made each and every one of you so incredibly special and unique with your own desires and your own gifts and talents. And this is what he wants to use to make you blessed and pure of heart. And we live in a time now that needs pure hearts, hearts that are able to enter fully into their age, hearts that are able to enter fully into their lives and to live lives to the fullest, while also maintaining that true desire for holiness. And each and every one of you have that capacity and Christ is ready to do that for you anytime. So I want to thank Deacon Richard. I want to thank your seminarian, Quan. I want to thank your pastor, all those men and women who help in your own formation. And I want to thank each and every one of you for humbling yourselves and allowing me to talk to you first and foremost. I want to thank you for also being altar servers what I was an ulcer for many years. <laughs> I loved it. I uh, made a lot of mistakes along the way, but I learned also <laughs> how, how to do a lot of stuff too. And it really helped my vocation to the priesthood. And maybe some of you boys watching this and young men are thinking about the priesthood. It is one of the most incredible lives in the world. I, I couldn't be happier. There's nothing else I'd rather do with my life than be a priest. And so if you're called to the priesthood, thank God, don't be afraid. Say yes to Jesus and continue altar serving and follow him. And the one thing that we know we're all called to is sainthood. And so as we reflect on this single beatitude of purity of heart, my prayer for you as your priest is that Christ will grant you through the intercession of Venerable Carlos, that purity of heart, that true desire to seek Christ in all things and to manifest his will so that all the earth may know that Christ Jesus is the Lord and experience the peace, the joy, and the freedom of his sacred heart. Thank you so much. And God bless you.